thank you for joining me today. Hello, welcome back. I'm Ryan on this channel. I react to stuff from Germany and stuff like that. Anyway, uh, how the internet in Germany is totally different than in America. This really caught my eye. Um, hopefully it's not just clickbait because <laughs> this is a super interesting concept, B mainly because of all the things different in Germany, I would assume the internet would be the same as, you know, America. So how is it different? I don't know. Let's find out. It is known as the World Wide Web, but does that necessarily mean internet surfers in Germany and the US will have the same experience using it? I would have thought so. Hey guys, and welcome back to our channel. I am Donnie. And I'm Aubrey. And we are two Americans currently. <laughs> what is going on with Aubrey? <laughs> Shoot. Hold on. Sorry, today I was trying to have the hologram live stream, but clearly the Wi Fi here is. I thought that might be alluding to something. <laughs> is way too slow. Anyways, we are. Is that all right? Is he saying the Wi Fi is bad in Germany? Currently living in Germany and sharing all of our experiences living and traveling throughout Europe. With different laws and regulations, websites geo blocking access to people in other countries, or even just differences in acceptance of digitalization amongst nations, we. As an American, the idea of being blocked from a website is mostly foreign. Now, there have been cases of like illicit websites like Mega Upload, I think, or, you know, services like LimeWire being raided and shut down. And then you get this like thing that says the FBI of the United States has shut down this website. But ap apart from that, extremely rare I can't think of any geo-blocked websites. I didn't I didn't know Germany had it. We found that like the that. experience using the internet can be very different depending on what country you're accessing it from. In fact, one of the biggest culture shocks for us moving to Germany was firsthand experiencing the lack of digitalization in much of German society mm. and bureaucracy. DW News described the state of digitalization in Germany like this: schools with outdated computers. Health authorities rely on fax machines, town offices that offer few or none of their services online. That's the reality in Germany in 2021. So what is our personal experiences? That just sounds like the result of a, a country that has a lot of history and has figured out how it likes to do things. And it's slowly changing in certain ways. And a lot of countries are like that, I feel. Been Certainly some things in America are still, you know, not as up to date as you would think. With the internet in Germany versus the USA, well, that is exactly what we are going to talk about today in our video. Technological Unterschied, Website Speeds and TLD. Technological Unterschied. Unterschied. In the same DW article that I mentioned before, they expanded on the internet and tech situation in Germany by saying, in a recent EU report, Germany was ranked 21st out of the bloc's 27 member countries, plus the UK when it comes to offering online services to its citizens. Several months into the pandemic, <laughs> health authorities were still reporting case numbers using fax machines. Fax, I've never used a fax machine in my life. People had problems working from home due to patchy internet connections, and across the country, schools lacked basic technology for remote learning. Now, statements like these offer a pretty bleak view of the internet in Germany, and it's probably a pretty broad overgeneralization. So I want to share with you what our personal experience has been, and I want to start by focusing on one thing mentioned in that article, and one thing Germany has become somewhat infamous for, patchy and slow internet connections. To benchmark, according to speedtest.net, the US ranks number 13 in the world for average fixed broadband speed with an average download speed of 203.81 megabits per second. That's not what I get. Shoot, I usually get like 30, sometimes 100. It's supposed to be 100. Rather than try and talk about the entire US, I'll focus on where we're from, Oklahoma. Oklahoma is the opposite of densely populated and for the most part, fairly rural. It ranks nearly dead center in 26th in broadband access amongst US states. Only 25.9% of Oklahomans have access to fiber optic service, but 78.1% at least have access to broadband 100 megabits per second or faster. Note, that is data for having 
access, not necessarily actually paying for having speeds that fast. Germany, on the other hand, ranks almost everybody has broadband all the way down at 35th in the world with an average download speed of 136.66 megabits per second. <laughs> That's still more than I get. Which honestly did surprise me that the average speed in Germany was that high. There are other factors that can hinder speeds to consider as well. For example, German homes tend to be built with much, much thicker oh. and denser walls than American homes, which Who'd I ever thought that? Like when thinking about the internet, the the walls are thicker in, a, in Germany, so the internet's bad. Can hinder hmm. Wi-Fi connections. With all the horror stories that we heard about internet speeds in Germany and based on their global rank with internet, we expected when we got here to struggle with very slow internet connection. And in particular, since we make YouTube videos, we thought for sure it would make uploading them more difficult. But for our needs, and honestly, based on what we have experienced in other parts of the globe, we certainly haven't had a complaint about our internet most of the time, and it has been fine for our particular needs. And our internet is by no means blazing fast, and for the internet package that we have, we get only about 40 to 43 megabits per second download and around four megabits per second upload. But that is also when only one- You know what? Speed test. We're doing it live, people. <laughs> oh, look at that. I get nothing. <laughs> Two. What is this trash? I'm moving to Germany. <laughs> so Two megabytes download. This is like my Wi-Fi that... How, why is my upload speed faster than my download? You know, hey, at least that's good for when I'm uploading these videos. I need to call the freaking Wi-Fi or the internet company. One person is using it and with one wall between me and the router. It is not uncommon for our internet to slow down to the 20 megabits per second range. In Germany, fiber optic cables have been invested in in only a few specific places to deliver the best internet speeds. As of June of 2020, Cologne had the best coverage of fiber optic cables at about 80%, hmm. Munich at 75%. I know very few people with fiber. It's still not very prolific here in the States. Hamburg at 72%, and then that is when it all drops off, and in particular, rural parts of the country. In Germany, most internet is delivered by old copper wires where fiber optic cables haven't been put in. We are actually about to move homes within the same town here in Germany, and when we looked at the connections available to the new home from the different major providers, we were looking at only having up to 16 megabits per second download speed available to us unless we got a special LTE plan from telecom. However, that was until our future landlord informed us that they actually just put in fiber optic cables to the house and we could get much, much faster internet and probably the fastest internet we have ever personally had. Hmm. But I do wanna know from you, what are your internet speeds generally? In Horrible. But honestly, that's not, that's kind of a bad example because my, I need to like call the internet people and complain because I don't know what the hell's going on. And also I think I'm connected to some kind of extension, the, the extended Wi-Fi network. So it's garbage, but. And what have I, I'm curious to know here in Indiana, in the city, everybody has internet. But if you go to the rural parts, there are people who don't have any internet. Um, like I know extended family members that don't have internet, period. <laughs> so is it like that in Germany? Have you experienced in terms of internet connections in Germany or other parts of the world? And not just that the city, but anywhere like in the suburbs, everybody has internet. In the city, everybody has internet. But if you go to the rural outskirts, farmland, some people don't have internet. Real quick, I do want to run a little test. Let's see how long your internet and mine takes to send me a notification that you have liked and subscribed to this channel. So go ahead and hit those buttons I'll and like. run this little test I'll with like. me. I am absolutely not an expert you know in what? European or American <laughs> data laws, but one thing we did not expect as we have lived in Germany and wanted to keep in touch with the local news back home is that many, if not most, American local news websites geoblock European visitors from their sites. Geo oh, we're the ones blocking them. Blocking simply means that a site blocks users from accessing it purely based on the geography that they are what accessing the it from. For example, if we want to access our home city's local news, KFOR, if we go to their website, we get this message. But it isn't just... <laughs> 
Hey, you guys, our European visitors are important to us. Now, GTFO. Our small capital city's news. It is also higher profile sites like the New York Daily News or Orlando Sentinel. A 2018 article by the BBC explains this by saying, the websites went dark in Europe after the General Data Protection Regulation, oh. GDPR, law came into force on the 25th. So it's really that they're just not bothering to comply with European law, which does kind of make sense for a local news website here in the states like nobody from italy wants to go to that website of may gdpr gives eu citizens almost nobody it's more rights over how their information is used under gdpr companies working in the eu or providing a service to people within the eu must show that they have a lawful basis for processing personal data or face hefty fines some news agencies and other websites in the u.s have come up with ways to be able to comply with the eu regulations so that us over here are able to access their websites but even three years on there are still a lot of websites that have mm. clearly determined their aren't enough Europe. That's like the opposite of what I thought. I thought he might say there's some kind of China stuff where they're banning websites, you know, but no. Germany ain't doing that, I figured. Right? I mean, we're only halfway through the video, I guess we'll find out. ...interested in small local American news sites to change in order to accommodate those visitors and EU regulations. Until this happens, though, there are always VPNs, which, by the way, this Sponsor. is not sponsored, but if you're oh. interested in the VPN, <laughs> we do have a link to the VPN that we use, ExpressVPN, in the description of the video where you can get some sweet deals if you sign up with them using our link. Well, that's kind of a sponsor, man. If you've got your own link, it's kind of a sponsor. Sites back home geo-blocking us from accessing them is not the only thing that the GDPR also changed in how we experience the internet over here. One thing we also notice every single time we want to access a website once we moved over here is that any and nearly all websites we get on, we never get to just simply surf that site from the moment that we click on their link. Instead, we always have an annoying pop-up oh, yeah. asking us to give consent for cookies now i said i've been getting more and more of that crap too you know take my cookies i don't care i don't want them take them it is super annoying and i find that it is in a minor way but termsfeed.com writes on the face of it cookie banners may seem like an unnecessary annoyance but there is a reason that governments are becoming more concerned about regulating online business activity along with the gdpr the e-privacy directive was passed and websites needing to comply with these new e-regulations have had to add a pop-up that looks something like a variation of this and you have to either give or deny consent to their cookies in the u.s however asking for consent to cookies is not required and therefore isn't always requested. To confirm this, I did some very important journalistic and scientific research by texting my brother in the US asking if he has to answer any annoying pop-ups every time he gets on a website in the US and his reply was, I think that may just be a Europe thing. I feel like I get that pop-up very rarely. It happens sometimes, but definitely not all. I swear it's happening more often, but definitely not nearly as much as I'm sure in Europe. I think it's just some websites don't filter out whether you're American or not. So they ask you regardless of if you're American or European. All the time. Therefore, in the US, he is still serving an internet bliss as he simply clicks on a website and just immediately starts scrolling for his entertainment <laughs> and completely avoids this yeah, two okay. second hindrance and annoyance. All while getting his information stolen, I guess. I'm doing another speed test. Hold up. Speed test. I connected to my main Wi-Fi. Let's see. <gasps> wow, blistering. Thank you, Spectrum. Wow, look at that American internet. Two, one. Oh man, so it wasn't just my extension. Sweet. Man. Wow. I'm so happy I pay so much money for that. Good American internet. When we look at a list of the top websites according to similarweb.com for the US and for Germany, we see a perfect example of the next difference we did not anticipate before moving here when it comes to internet use between Germany and the US. Mm, Somewhat not surprising, the top three websites visited in both Germany and the US are the same massive global brands, but number four and number five in Germany was the... Wait, which one's... People here still go to Yahoo? Prize for us. I would have thought... 
Hmm, what the heck? So Google's on your guys' twice. What the hell? It's just a German Google. Specifically, these parts. If you don't know the term top level domain or TLD for short, this is what the last few letters of a website is called. By far the most popular TLD is of course .com. However, there are more <laughs> specific and That's Kim.com. Special That's the guy I actually alluded to earlier who made mega upload and now he is in trouble. TLDs known as country code top level domains or CCTLDs for short. These are special domain names that are country or region specific and designate which country that particular website is trying to service. For example, .uk for the United Kingdom or .cn for China or .de for Deutschland. And Germans and Deutschland. probably the rest of the world are much more aware of CCTLDs than Americans are. In April 2021, Statista released data showing the most used CCTLDs TLDs in the world, and we can see that Germany's .de is the third most used. There's a lot of .de's out there. I mean, the Germans must be whipping up a lot of websites. Used because so many websites I've never seen are you. Germany uses this rather than .com. This is one thing we have now had to get used to using because one thing that you. Uh, am I stupid? What is Tokela? Tokela TK. I know some websites use TK, but. What is Tokelau? You will notice missing from this list of top 10, which mm. might seem a little bit strange, is that the US is not listed in a list of top CCTLDs. One, you might be thinking, well, that's because the US doesn't have a CCTLD, or two, that's because the US CCTLD is .com. Well, unfortunately, both of those thoughts are actually wrong. First, .com is not the US specific website designation and US does have a CCTLD. And in fact, it was the first invented CCTLD, .us. However, wow. it is extremely rare for Americans to use a website specific to the US that uses a .us address. And I would venture to say that most Americans may not even know it exists. The only website in the US is top 50 most visited websites that even uses .us. I'm trying to think, what would that be? What website uses it? Like a government website? US is zoom.us. Oh, zoom.us. Yes. Very quick and the most popular explanation that I have found online from a couple of- That is so weird though. You would think of all countries, US would be like, yes, facebook.us, google.us. No. I actually like that. Uh, that would be obnoxious. Different forums talking about why the US doesn't use its own CCTLD is because the US invented the TLD system before CCTLDs came along. And therefore, we just stuck with what we were already using, .com mm. rather than .us. Of course, this is an oversimplification and not every US site is .com. So then maybe the question becomes, why do other countries use a country-specific TLD rather than just using .com like in the US? And for example, why do we need to use Amazon.de in Germany rather than using Amazon.com? Well, the answer can be quite uh. simple. It was very frustrating when we first tried to use Amazon.com over here and most products we wanted to buy, the seller wouldn't ship to Germany. But luckily, Amazon recognized that we were in Germany, suggested that we use Amazon.de, and that's when we learned this site is specifically targeting a German demographic and therefore what we find will be able to ship mm. to us over here. There are other pros like the prices, default to euros and for Germans it actually is in German for them although we use a special version called amazon.de in English most of the time. <laughs> but so therein lies the answer for why countries use their CCTLDs. Users in a specific country are able to determine that a website that ends in their country's CCTLD is going to give them the most pertinent and specific information to them rather than a frustrating site that the information is more internationally generic or for example, may not actually even ship products that they sell to their country. Now, as a quick side note, just looking at these lists, you can see that that there is not always a .de version of popular websites. And in many cases, if you type in a popular website followed by .de, it will- Some of the websites on there made me- Just laugh. redirect you to the .com <laughs> version of the website. For example, type in youtube.de and you will immediately just be redirected to mm. youtube.com. Although this is not a hard and fast rule for websites. Based on the last difference, 
This next difference is more obvious to me now, but at first after moving here was a very big frustration for me. I went all out in my attempt to integrate into my German life and also I wanted to give myself a challenge in learning the language. So I switched my phone completely over to being in German and setting my country profile of my phone to Germany. This inevitably changed the way that my phone searches the internet compared to say Aubrey's phone, which is still set up with the country profile of the US. The biggest most annoying difference between searching the internet between my German settings and my old American settings are when I am Googling for football scores. <laughs> American football. If I want to know what the score to my alma mater's football game over the weekend was, I simply Google Texas A&M football and on my American device, I didn't even have to click on a website to find the results because Google just told me the score to the last game at the top of their page. However, he's the only man in, in Germany searching that. Now that I am searching for scores on a German device, Google works a little bit differently and I guess assumes that a German wouldn't really be interested in that information, so I don't get the simplified straightforward answer at the top of the page. Rather, I have to scroll through websites to try and find one that has the updated scores <laughs> on it. Now based on the last difference with CC- How ancient. TLDs, of course. I remember having to actually click websites to find information. This makes sense because my phone is set up as a German device. If Aubrey and I Google the same thing, we will definitely get different web results, no matter the subject. My phone will often give preferences to .de sites on that topic because the information you have to do that thing on Google the subject. too. My phone will accept the often give preferences to .de sites on that. You guys need to rise up against that. I think that's too annoying. That topic because the information is geared specifically for a German audience, whereas Aubrey's phone set up as an American device will pull up mainly .com sites or sites in English geared towards her demographic. And finally, of the websites most visited in each country, an interesting thing I noticed is about the American developed and owned app WhatsApp. The first time that we talked yeah. about WhatsApp in a video, our German viewers didn't believe us that Americans don't use or don't even know about WhatsApp in many cases. I know what it is, but nobody uses that. Do people use that in Germany? Hmm. Uh, I have used it once. I have it downloaded because we went on a trip to the Dominican Republic. And in order to talk with our, um, like the people there and at the hotel, they did it through WhatsApp, so I had to download it. While the rest okay. of the world depends on it. To further prove this point, that's so crazy. WhatsApp ranks as the number 26 most visited site in Germany, yet isn't even the top 50 in the US, and honestly, it may even be much lower on the list, but I would have had to create an account and possibly pay to access the information, so forgive me, but just trust <laughs> me, Americans don't even know what WhatsApp is for the most part. Something that you can tell from this recent- I still don't really understand why people use it over just texting. Tweet from Casey Neistat as well. I hope that you enjoyed seeing those few ways that surfing the internet has been different in our experience. I hope that you in something that New Pixels. How do you survive without iMessage FaceTime fans? Ah. You can tell from this recent tweet from Casey mm -hmm. Neistat as well. I hope that you enjoyed seeing those few ways that surfing the internet has been different in our experience in Germany from the US, but let me know- It's interesting to think like in Germany, you get different results when you search Google. I never thought about that. Hmm. And the internet speed, apparently my American internet is, uh, apparently I got the German plan or something even worse. German, your, your guys' internet is way faster than mine, so there you go. Uh, but that, I think that's just because I'm being scammed. <laughs> I'm going to go call my internet company. Uh, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you feel like it. I react to Germany every weekday. I hope to see you here tomorrow. I'll be here. Goodbye.